everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're here with Chloe. We're at Farm Sanctuary. And we're gonna say hi to some animals. I'm super excited, super excited. <laughs> we're so excited to have you here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you wanna give the origin story? So uh, Farm Sanctuary is the nation's founding farm animal rescue organization. We were founded in 1986 uh, by our two founders who, um, in the beginning, it was an all volunteer organization that was partially funded by selling vegan hot dogs out of a VW van at Grateful Dead concerts. Um, and since then, we've grown to become one of the nation's leading farm animal protection and rescue organizations. Um, we operate two sanctuaries, one in Watkins Glen, New York, in upstate New York, and the one that we're at right now in Acton, California, Southern cool. California, yeah. Um, and combined, the sanctuaries have given shelter to thousands of farm animals over the years. But before we were rescuing animals, we first started sort of like as an investigative organization. Our, our detective work. Detective work, exactly. Yeah, yeah so our, our, our two founders would go into uh, farms and stockyards, take photos and videos of what they saw to educate mm -hmm. the public about how farm animals were being treated in our food system. Cool. Um, now one day they were walking around a stockyard and they came upon a dead pile, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a pile of animals who've died um, and they've been thrown away because yeah. they passed away before they could be sold, right? Um, so when they saw this, they wanted to take a photo of it, you know, to show people that this kind of practice was commonplace in mm -hmm. agriculture. Now, as they were taking the picture, a sheep in the pile lifted her head up. And she was still alive. I'm sorry, what year was this? This was 1986. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they took the sheep off the pile, they brought her to a veterinarian, thinking that she'd probably die because she was in terrible condition. Yeah. But after only 30 minutes, she started to feel better. She stood up, she was even walking around. Turns out that she was just really dehydrated. Yeah. So even her most basic needs weren't being met. Mm -hmm. uh, but after she got some water, some veterinary care, she made a quick recovery. Our founders brought her home. They gave her the name Hilda. And uh, it was her rescue that actually inspired them to start a farm animal sanctuary which as far as we know is the very first of its kind that's awesome well yeah. right out of the gate no. um, and this will be in the description is there a place that people can go yes. to help donate or just help out in any any way absolutely yeah yeah so um, our website is farmsanctuary.org there you can make donations learn about how you can visit us um, learn about our events and ways that you can get involved um, and then if you want to follow us on social media I, I know our Instagram is very mm -hmm is very popular and yeah, so just at Farm Sanctuary. Sweet, yeah. hell yeah. Well, let's meet some animals. Let's meet some I'm animals. so excited. Yeah, me too. We're excited to have you here. We were just talking right before this of why this video is happening. And Chloe was like, yeah, what, what was your idea? What did you want to do? And I was like, I just wanted to see some animals. That's kind of it. That's, that's really all. I just like animals a lot. And Aww. yeah, and obviously you guys are doing some incredible work, so. Yeah, let's see some, let's see let's some. Let's do it. We some have some, some some pretty phenomenal souls here. So our goats can be a little more on the shy side, mm -hmm. which is, is sometimes surprising for people who know goats, because yeah. you know goats have a reputation for being very playful, but a lot of our goats here are in their golden years. Um, you'll notice they're up there on the hill, a lot of them yep. relaxing. There's Randy up there, who we suspect that he might be um, one of the oldest goats alive. <laughs> he's he's about 19 years old. Wow, wow. Yeah, how which is, old do goats it's usually yeah. like usually max around 17. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So is it okay to pet yeah, any of the animals? Sure. I just don't want to do And thank you so anything. much for asking. Yeah. yeah, so so here at the sanctuary, we, you know, try to remember that we are guests in the animal's home and mm -hmm. due to the neglect and abuse that so many of them have experienced, some of them are really nervous around humans. So yeah. um, we believe here, you know, that we should honor their agency in choosing whether or not they want to interact with us or guests. But there are many outgoing animals. Alice is among them. So Alice is one of my favorite residents here. Right now she's working on that salt lick. <laughs> Hi, Alice. <laughs> Alice it's nice to meet sweet. you. How yeah. should I greet yeah, a goat? Feel free. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think you just start by saying hello. Mm -hmm. um, Hi, and then if you want to give her a pet on her back Hi, or her neck. Oh. Sometimes they like great. cheek and chin scratches, mm -hmm. forehead scratches, so you my, can get in there. My girlfriend is really, really upset because she had a thing that she had to do today oh. that couldn't be rescheduled, but she oh. she, she wanted really to come. wanted to come. So we might have to do a part two. <laughs> oh, I love uh, that. Sometime later on. I love and bring that. Her. But yeah. yeah, she had a goat in her neighborhood growing <gasps> really? up. Really? Yeah. 
Alice, you're great. How old is yeah. Alice? I'm not sure about her age, but I can tell you that she was rescued a few years ago. <laughs> she was born to a like a, Let me help you out. a very small farm, mm -hmm. and the owner of the farm he suspected that she had this disease that is highly communicable to other goats and is deadly mm -hmm. um, if they get it. So he was actually just 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 going to shoot her. He was just going to euthanize her and just yeah. shoot her. His daughter-in-law loved Alice. She had really bonded with her, um, so she was really upset when she heard this. So she asked asked if he would let her release Alice to sanctuary, and he said yes. Um, so that's how she wound up here. We tested her for that disease, and she doesn't even have it. Damn. So it was just like a few strokes of wild luck, and, mm -hmm. and, and now she's here and, and out of the food system, which is cool. Yeah, so for people that might be in this community, mm -hmm. uh, slash in Southern California, yeah. if they have animals that they need to, uh, you like know, re -home. depending on the circumstances, rehome, What's the process like That's for that? That's a great question, yeah. So we do get, yeah, a fraction of our animals from folks who are rehoming. Mm -hmm. We usually ask them to go through our farm animal adoption network. So, so, so we have a team of folks mm -hmm. that work on placing animals. So okay. we are almost always at capacity at our sanctuaries mm -hmm. um, just because we want to have enough room and resources to give each individual the care and attention that they need, right? Yeah. So when spots do open up, of course we fill them, but then most of the time we can't even take the animals that people mm. are reaching out to us for so that's why we have this network and it's like thousands of people all over the country who you know have loving homes who don't want to use these animals for food they yeah. want to treat them as you know family members companions and we also <laughs> work with other farm animal sanctuaries and together those sanctuaries and loving homes we are able to place thousands more animals than we would normally be able yeah. to rescue right that's awesome yeah it's great that's really yeah. really cool Alice, it's a pretty cool so program good to meet you you keep working on that salt lick yeah we will, she's gonna we'll keep working back. on it so just before we leave the goat area, let me tell you a couple more stories here. Yeah, who do we, so, who do we yeah, have who up do here? You need to know, right? Um, so Erica here, she was actually born here. Now we don't have a lot of animals. The uh, white one in the middle? Yeah, yeah, the one standing with the brown face. We don't have a lot of animals who are, who are typically born here because we don't do any breeding here. Mm -hmm. But when a pregnant animal gets rescued, their baby yeah. will be born here, right? So when we rescued her mother, her mother Claire came from a very small farm where these animals were so neglected. They were like starving. They were being fed like table scraps and moldy bread. And yeah. like their babies were being killed with an earshot and eyesight of them. So it was really sad. horrible. Yeah, so they came here really traumatized and malnourished. Her mother, Claire, was so um, emaciated that we didn't even know that she was pregnant. Mm. And then one day we went into her little barn and yeah. there was a baby Erica. So oh. she's she's only ever known sanctuary here, which is really Do amazing. Do goats only give birth to one? They sometimes have twins. I feel like... But there's not like a litter of goats. There's not a litter of goats, okay. yeah. It's usually one or two. I think sometimes they can have triplets, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, I think this whole video is just going to be me giggling. About, <laughs> That's okay. Can I feed Alice some hay? Yeah, go for it. Alice, would you like to eat some hay from, from my hand? Would you like some hay? Oh, no. <laughs> she's you like, know. I think I'd rather have a pet. <laughs> You'd rather have pets? You can get those too. You have both if you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Alice, we'll come back. Do you want this? It's here if you want it, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go meet some pigs. How much land do you guys have here? That's a good question. Um, so which I ask like I know. I know, right? Land I like don't things, even know. So I, don't know. It's a, I mean, in my opinion, it's a lot. Ten um, acres. I can't. I have no, no, it's idea over that. It's Please, over that? No, uh, yeah, oh yeah. Please don't quote me on it. Okay. Um, but I know it's under, I, I'm pretty sure it's under 100 acres or around 100 acres, but our New York sanctuary, I know for a fact, has 275 acres. That sounds like a lot. It's a lot. Like you People need like a car to get around. 200 acres a lot? It sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like a lot of land. Pigs. Yeah. Lucas got bit by a pig. Oh, great. We had some exposure therapy today for you, Lucas. Hi, friends. Here we have Von D. <laughs> oh, and Morris. And you know what? Morris has a little scratch on his face. Cool. I, I'm gonna call shelter and see what that's about. Give cool. me one second. Okay, cool. So he thinks that these two actually got in a little tussle this morning. Are these regular pigs? That's a great question. Because <laughs> in my mind, yeah. pigs are way smaller than <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. So are they cool with being pat? Yeah, they are. Let me say hello to them first. And cool. how best to approach a sleeping pig is to start at their rear mm. um, and let them know that you're human. 
that you just want to give them some love today. You don't want to go for their face because mm -hmm. they don't have great visibility. They might think that okay. you're another pig encroaching on their sleeping territory. Hello. Hey, Morris. Oh, he's going to roll over for a belly rub. Oh, 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 Morris. Morris is my favorite pig. <laughs> He's stretching like my yeah. dog B. Uh, isn't he special? He's great. He's great. She sometimes rolls over too. Let me see. Maybe not today. Yeah, Who is she's this? Like relaxing. This is Von D. Von D. Yeah, so she's the matriarch. She's also the biggest one in our herd. She's about 800 pounds. Is that what it's called? A herd of pigs? A herd of pigs. Yeah. Damn, yeah. She's not even the biggest one that I've ever seen here. We used to have one named Macy who passed away. She was even larger than Von D. Um, but we oftentimes get people very surprised about how big the mm -hmm. pigs are and how big some of the other species are too. And that's because, you know, a, a lot of the time when people encounter pigs, they're encountering like a pot belly pig, yeah. you know, smaller pigs. And then when people do see these breeds of pigs, these breeds that are typically raised for food, we only really see them as babies because and they're slaughtered around six months old. What breed of pig is this? She's a Yorkshire. A Yorkshire pig? Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, pigs are like dog size. Yeah. This is a big dog. Yeah. Really big. <laughs> she is a big, yeah, she's very big dog. She's like a small bear or something to me. Morris, you know? can I give you a belly rub? Yeah, go for so it. Yeah, Morris. let me get out of your way. <laughs> Look at you, bud. <laughs> so how old are these guys? So Von D, she came to us in around 2017. I mean, she was a piglet then. So she's <laughs> like about five. Is that old for a pig? Pigs here at Sanctuary can live to be around 10 or 11 years old, oh. but in the food system, they will either be slaughtered when they're like, they're still babies or yeah. for like the breeding sows for the female pigs that are used to, to make more piglets, they're typically killed at just a few years old, so. That's so sad. Yeah. Um, what is the white stuff behind That's a great ears? question. Um, so this is actually sunscreen. So oh. we have, yeah. <laughs> so we have selectively bred pigs to be pale because dark skin leaves dark pigments on the meat, which consumers find unappetizing to eat. Mm. Um, so that's why, you know, pigs oftentimes are pink or very light colored, which is not a problem for their skin when they live their lives, you know, entirely indoors on factory farms. But here at the sanctuary, they're able to sunbathe. Um, so we need to protect them from skin mm. cancer. That but Morris, really uh, because he has darker skin, we don't put sunscreen on his ears. These guys are great. They are I love great. These guys. This is the ideal life. It is. Just yeah. sleeping. Yeah. And eating. They nap a lot. They also go hiking up in these hills when the weather's nice. Oh, a little and, hike. Yeah. They root around. They're kind of like architects of their environment. They'll uh, make. They're like little landscapers, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're cool. <laughs> I love these guys. I know they're great. Oh, look at the feet. The little, oh. the little feet. If you want, we can see if there are any other pigs at the far yeah. end. Yeah. Cool. How long have you been here? Great question. So I actually first came here as a guest on a tour cool. um, in 2015. And I loved it so much that I begged them to let me volunteer here. Uh -huh. And then I volunteered here for about two and a half years. And then that inspired me to get involved in farm animal protection as a career. So I've been, I, I've been coming here in, in one way or another since 2015. Cool. Yeah. And How I love it. How many people work here? So for, for the whole organization, we have I think it's approaching 100 people, but for folks that just work on site here, around 12 or 13. So where are we going now? So we're gonna go up to see the bovine, the cattle. Ooh. Yeah, the cows are pretty fantastic. And on the way, we're gonna pause and, and say hello to the horses. Admire the horses. We are gonna admire the horses. So our horses are pretty shy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's unlikely that they'll come up and say hello. Oh, but this one right here that we're approaching first is my favorite. Her name is Joanne. And she's really special. She has a really compelling story, a sad story, but it has a happy ending because she's here. She's here. Yeah, so she was likely someone's, you know, pet horse. Mm -hmm. And horses, of course, are very expensive to take care of. So when yeah. people fall in hard times, oftentimes the horses, you know, they lose their home and they need to be rehomed. Um, so her family ended up giving her up and um, she was sold at an auction and she was sold to a company that harvests something called pre-marin, it's pregnant horse urine. So they were breeding her and keeping her in a stall all day and collecting her urine to be used for um, medication for menopause. And then when she was considered useless or spent there, she was auctioned off again and she wound up at a rodeo where they were doing something, which is illegal here, it's called horse tripping. It's where they lasso the feet of the horse and then trip them. 
That's so sad. So you notice like one of her front knees is like very yeah. kind of bulbous and from all the, the fractures that happened there. So when she got here, she was incredibly shy and she is still very shy. She actually has a horse gentler that comes mm -hmm. um, pretty frequently to, to give her therapy. That's like a horse whisperer kind of. Yeah. And yeah. That's she, awful. Yeah, yeah. So but sad. she's made a lot of uh, progress and healing here and we're really lucky to have her. She's a very gentle soul. You're doing great, Joanne. She's doing great. I love the theme with farm animals that yeah. most farm animals have human names. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I really love that. For the most part they do. Some of our chickens have some like funky uh -huh. names, but. Who's this back here? Oh, that is Zoe. And she is Joanne's best friend. Hi, Zoe. And then Darla, I think, might be in the little barn there. Oh, you guys have donkeys too? We do, we have some really cute ones. Wow. I haven't been up close with a cow in a really long time. Oh, nice. Well, we'll certainly get They're up close really to them They're really big. <laughs> they are, yeah, these guys are especially big. This is Honky Tonk. <laughs> He's a fantastic host. He likes to come and greet people. Is he a donkey? He's a donkey. Hi. He's very lovable and very loving. <laughs> Aren't you? Oh, he's coming right for the camera. Oh, he wants to see Jocelyn. <laughs> it's great to meet you, bud. Yeah, he's, he's pretty special. How yeah, old is he? Cool. He's definitely at least in his 20s. He does really like to greet people. He does. Jocelyn, he really likes you. Oh, he's a ladies man. <laughs> okay, so when we're in with these guys, just a few safety things. Yeah. Um, we want to approach them slowly and from the side. We don't want to walk, stand, or position ourselves directly in front or behind them because they can't see us there. Mm -hmm. Always be aware of where they're moving because they're, of course, enormous. So, and some of them move really quickly. Like um, Saffron, for example, the tallest guy, he's like wildly quiet and fast when he's walking. So cool. you just want to be aware of your surroundings. Sometimes cows will swing their heads or swish their tails to swat away flies or to let us know that they'd rather be left alone. So just be conscious of that. If you're okay. standing close and then we do have a few folks in here that we're not going to approach today cool. including leo the all brown cow who's laying down okay he's like a big puppy dog he's an adolescent he mm -hmm. takes any interaction as a sign that you want to play and the playing to him the light brown or the dark brown the light brown right there okay. in the middle cool. yeah so even just looking at him or talking to him he'll be like you want to go and he'll try to mount you which is really dangerous cool. so, <laughs> so we're not gonna we'll, yeah. yeah he's incredibly sweet he's incredibly loving I and mean, it breaks my heart that we can't interact with him but just and for our own a, safety he's a little horny he is who he is he's an adolescent it's all right yeah bud. and then the all black cows mm -hmm. they have a really interesting story a very powerful story that i can't wait to share with you but you'll understand why we're not going to approach them either cool. yeah how yeah. do we approach them again? Yeah. I just want to make sure <laughs> Slowly and from the side. Slowly so, and from the side. Um, let's go meet Saffron first. He's cool. the he's the most outgoing of our herd here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to meet the biggest boy. The biggest boy. He's actually the patriarch of the herd. Ah. He's the protector. He takes care of everybody. He has been with us since he was one day old. Oh. So we bottle fed him here. Hi, buddy. So Saffron, he was born um, in, uh, to the dairy industry. Uh -huh. um, now a lot of people don't realize that cows need to be pregnant or nursing in order to produce milk, just mm -hmm. like humans or any other mammal. So to keep their production up, cows on dairy farms are re-impregnated about once a year. And then the babies are separated from the mom so that the milk can be sold uh, to humans. Since the male calves won't produce milk, they're seen as useless. So they are sold to be raised for beef or for veal, which is how we came um, to um, take Saffron in. I don't yeah. mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no, you're fine. Is this a normal size for a cow? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, so not really. Um, in our food system, typically we never allow these animals to grow into adulthood. So here at the sanctuary, hey. where, where he's able to reach, you know, nine years old as he is now. <laughs> <laughs> Big tongue. He's enormous. He, and he's, he's about six foot three yeah. at his hip. I feel like I'm a kid going back to like, my elementary school, or I'm an adult going back to my elementary school and I'm like, wow, it's the reverse though, where it's like, wow, everything is really small. Now it's like, wow, these animals are way bigger than my brain thought they were. Yeah. You're really tall. Yeah, bud. he is very, and he's not even the tallest one that we ever had. The tallest one we ever had, he was six foot seven at his hip. <gasps> he has a very strong relationship with our shelter director named Jess. She bottle fed him, you know, mm -hmm. they've been friends since he was just tiny. Um, I love your ears. And a few years ago, we had rescued a cow who was really traumatized by humans, didn't do well with humans, even mm -hmm. our caregivers. So our caregivers would have to work in teams to make sure that they were always safe when they were in with the cattle. Well, one day Jess found herself in a position that was kind of tricky. She could tell that the traumatized cow wanted her to leave the area. Um, so she tried to find a way out. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't fast enough and the upset cow started to charge her. 
which is of course very dangerous. Yeah. Instinctively, Jess yelled Saffron's name, and yeah. Saffron heard her, came running over, put himself in between Jess and the upset cow, protected her from any danger, yeah, and just made sure that she was safe until she was out of the area. Very, He's got an itch or something. Uh, I was afraid. Yeah, I know, you're fine. <laughs> He's, he's like trying to figure he's out. He's really big. Isn't he huge? He's really, really big. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, I'm very intimidated. Yeah. I, I mean, it makes sense. He's huge. You're he's huge. Really he's big. He's a big love, aren't you? I think that Can this kind of today? stuff, and I don't know if what we're doing yeah. is a very special occasion. Um, like, I don't know how much people come in it interact this yeah. closely with the animals? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we do have tours every weekend. Oh, cool. Yeah, we have... Um, Similar to what we're doing right now? Exactly, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, That's but so important. Ex except there are, you know, 15 people yeah. here instead of just you guys, but... Yeah. That's so important, though, because yeah. I think it's it's really cool to see these animals up close. It is, and it's you, very special. You get a lot of perspective. You're so pretty, and you're so big. I know, he's such a love. And sorry, how old is he? He's nine. Which is pretty old for a cow. Um, he's like about like middle age. So the females can live <laughs> can live a little feels longer. So weird. I know, like a giant cat tongue, right? Yeah. You can Ethan kisses. Kiss. It's a kiss for Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> you are just kind of like a big dog, big puppy. Oh, that feels nice. A nice chin scratch feels good. Oh. How much does he weigh? They can weigh to be it. like he's probably over twenty five hundred pounds. Is it safe to stand next yes. to him? Yeah, for... totally. Yeah, go for it. So here's some um, scale for you. Um, he's so big. <laughs> big guy. I like you a lot. Good friend. Good friend. Well, we'll come back to you a little later. Say hi again. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for the kisses. Your tongue feels a little weird, but I, I like you a lot. <laughs> he's cool. Yeah, Who is this guy with the horns? Yeah, this is Cowboy. Cowboy? Yeah. Is he safe to approach? He is. Yeah, he's he's very outgoing. If he starts to stand up, we're going to just give him some room. Okay. He loves human affection for the most part. If he, you know, feels like he has an itch or has some flies, he's going to shake his head, which mm -hmm. of course is a little bit Can intimidating with the, the horns. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Hi, buddy. Yeah, he's a big love too. You're a really cool guy. You're a really cool guy. Hi, buddy. <laughs> he Drooling likes you. A little bit. You're drooling a little bit, bud. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was rescued by a different animal sanctuary, and they had adopted him out to a family. But they, they didn't do an amazing job of figuring out, you know, the kind of home that he was going into. Those folks didn't feed him correctly, and he also wasn't, he didn't live with any other cattle. Um, and they're incredibly social animals. They really thrive when they're with, you know, other cattle. So when that family could no longer take care of him, they reached out to us to see if we could um, give him a new home. We very enthusiastically said yes. He came here and he saw the other cows and he was literally jumping for joy. It was like he was dancing. It was very cool. That's so cute. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, the cows really love each other. So um, when they get older, of course, with their size, it can be challenging on their bodies. They can get really arthritic. Mm -hmm. And they have this this huge pasture up there that they need to climb this hill to get into. Yeah. And when a cow gets older and is so arthritic that they can no longer walk up that hill, the other cattle won't go into the back pasture either and will stay with them down here. That's so So they won't be cute. alone. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Very nice to meet you, but. I would love to tell you the story about two cows that we have. Yes. In June of 2021, around 41 cows escaped a slaughterhouse south of downtown. Um, downtown LA? Downtown LA, oh, yeah. Wow. In like Pico Rivera area, which is a little bit south of downtown, there's this big, well, there are a few slaughterhouses and there's a very big beef slaughterhouse there. And a gate was left open, 41 cows escaped and they were like running through the streets, literally running for their lives, right? Yeah. Because these animals are so intuitive, they can sense what's going to happen to yeah. them in these places. So animal control and the police and some of the workers were like rounding up these cows to send them back to the slaughterhouse to be slaughtered there. Meanwhile, civilians were like capturing footage of this on their phones, right? Yeah. It was very dramatic. It was making like national news. Then 
They had rounded up all the cows, except where there was one who had escaped capture for like 24 hours or something. And when they finally captured her, that event was so, it, it, was, it was so dramatic. It's kind of hard footage to watch, to be honest, because mm -hmm. she's just obviously very scared. Activists had rallied behind her, released a sanctuary. So we were able to rescue her and bring mm -hmm. her here. Her name is June. Is this June yeah, right this here? Yeah, this is June right here. Hi, June. Who's looking at us. Very pretty June. <laughs> yeah, she's so lovely. Um, and then she was being isolated in this back this like far pasture away from all the other animals just to like recover and decompress. And then a week later we get a call that there was another cow who had walked 12 miles wow. and had been living, just like been concealing herself for, yeah. for a whole week, living in a park under a bridge. She's over there right now. She's one of the black cows over there. But yeah, she had evaded people for a whole week. Um, and then when she was captured, she was also brought here. The two of them moved in together into that, mm. into that far pasture um, and became best friends. And they like, That's you know, so watched over each other, groomed each other. And then now they're a part of this community and they've, and they've blended in very well. That's so cool. Yeah, they're really cool. In, in the beginning, for like months, this would be impossible, us standing this close to them. Yeah. They probably like, would have run away, but. Yeah. Um, that's so sad. I know. I'm so glad you guys are here now. Just <laughs> chilling with everybody. Yeah, they're special. Do you want to meet some birds? Yeah, let's meet some birds. While we make our way to the birds, yeah. um, it's incentive to donate. If people yeah. uh, donate to Farm Sanctuary, what does is, what is the money go to? I mean, again, great. No, kind that's a great question. Obvious, it is obvious and then not obvious. It's mm. because we do have many programs. So um, of course, donations will be funneled here mm. to take care of the animals. It will be funneled to placing more animals in loving homes across the country. Mm. It also gets funneled into different areas of our work. So we don't yeah. just do rescue. We also do legal advocacy. Farm Sanctuary was one of the very first organizations that worked on passing laws to protect farm animals mm -hmm. and to improve treatment of animals in our food system. We have, you know, like a team of lawyers who work on like welfare laws to improve the treatment of farm animals and also of farm workers mm -hmm. and yeah, protecting their rights because they are also abused in the system. Mm -hmm. And what else do we do? We have a education department that reaches students all across the country mm -hmm. with not just the stories of our animals and the way that farm animals are treated in our food system, but with information on how our entire food system impacts all these different communities and farm workers because they're exploited all yeah. over the country and also how our food system impacts the environment because mm -hmm. uh, it's as it is right now extremely unsustainable yeah yeah we do a lot of stuff we also have like a, a youth activist group so like for cool. any teenagers that are out there that want to get involved i help run this um this group called the Youth Leadership Council of, yeah, just like teens who want to make our food system better and they're they're cool. awesome. And then, um, is what I'm sharing too dark? No. I feel like a not lot of what all. I'm talking about is pretty dark. Very good to have that okay. perspective. Cool. So what kind of birds down. are we going to see? We are going to see chickens and turkeys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, chickens and turkeys. So at our other sanctuary in upstate New York, because they get rain mm -hmm. like we hardly ever do here they can have water birds too like ducks and geese mm -hmm. but here uh, because it's drier we have turkeys and chickens cool and we have some really unique chickens i think they're kind of that they're gonna blow your mind a little bit they're i have pretty like special a, like a mixed feeling on chicken not a feeling yeah. on chickens but like I'm a little afraid of chickens. <laughs> That's not uncommon. A lot. I meet a lot of people here who are at least a little bit afraid of chickens. Yeah. So let's see who we can meet first. They're a little wild right now. They're seeing Josh, their caregiver. Oh yeah. So, so I they think know. they're yeah, they're pretty amped. We're we gonna get to see I'll him. I'll give them some room. Yeah, no, we can see. They're so excited to see you. I've never seen the turkeys so thrilled. Yes. Let's uh, go in and be with the chickens because these, um, our turkeys here, they, they seem to be pretty amped up and oh, I want to give them a second to relax a little. Yeah. Excuse me, friends. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah. There's a little 
little tiny <gasps> one. Oh yeah, that's Lil Hunter. You just met our biggest resident, Saffron. Mm -hmm. This is our smallest resident, Lil Hunter. She weighs less than a pound <laughs> and she's fully grown. She's fully grown? She's fully grown, yeah. So her breed is called a Silky Bantam. So that's like sort of like a mixed purebred chicken. Yeah. So Silkies, they have those very soft looking feathers, those very fine yeah. feathers. And then Bantam is the breed that they mix with other breeds to make a miniature version of a chicken. Okay. So. You're so small. Yeah, she's 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 our teensiest. How should I approach a chicken? One. Great question. <laughs> um, slowly. It's nice to get down on their level a little bit because mm -hmm. chickens are prey animals, so they don't like being approached or pet from above. If you want to put a little food in your hand to offer to them, you can. Now, just as a heads up, the white chickens. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know why, but for some reason, their breed is a little more aggressive when they eat. Yeah. Um. So just as a heads up. How? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones won't be as aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> like the red star is a little gentler, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you're way Want gentler. Some? Yeah, you you eat so delicately. Yeah, very delicate. You not so much. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Ow. We haven't figured it out. <laughs> so how many how many chickens do you guys have? Probably around 50 chickens cool. combined. What kind of chicken is that guy? Um, he's a Polish roo with the hair. So yeah. he's actually our flock leader. His name is David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> and then his best friend is around here too. His best friend is Rod Stewart and he is, oh, there's Rod Stewart. Oh, Rod, what's <laughs> up my guy? And together they are the flock leaders. And it's funny because they're definitely not the biggest roosters, mm -hmm. but they must just command the most respect. Yeah, because it's the hair. yeah, yeah, it has the, to be the hair. The power's the in the hair. It's like Regina George, what, yeah. what they say. And she's dust bathing right now, and they're <laughs> they're really like grooming oh. her. And so chickens dust bathe. Um, they take dust baths instead of like water baths. Mm -hmm. The dust it gets in between their feathers, and it like pushes out pests. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's how they stay clean. And this is the coop? Yes, this is the coop. Yeah, you can peek your head inside. We typically don't allow people in because it's like their private space, but you yeah. can see where they hang out. They there have like their little in. nesting boxes and stuff. They play the piano? They do sometimes. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, we try to give them lots of enrichment here. We put in these trees several yeah. months ago, and when we put the trees in, they sort of held these like chicken Olympic games where they yeah. would jump up to see like who could get the tallest leaf off That's the tree. So it was very cute. We have a bunch of rabbits in our yard. Oh, and like we, wild rabbits? Or, yeah, or, wild oh, rabbits. Oh, cool. And we saw them, I bought some night vision goggles, <laughs> and we saw them playing games with each other, so one would run at the other and they would just hop over each no. other and it's then like switch. Frog. It was like leapfrog. Oh my it was God. so cute. It was adorable. That is so cute. Hello. Yeah, Hi. I love seeing animals play. Oh, oh, that's okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. I offended her. No, I'm sure you didn't. Anybody want food? Food? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So at night, do they all go in the coop? They do. Yeah, so at night, in, in the evening, all of our animals are put into the barns and the doors are closed so that yeah. they can be safe at night. Nice. Yeah. It's so good meeting you guys. Yeah, they're special. They're all very pretty. Especially, what's the little one's name again? Lil Hunter. Lil Hunter. <laughs> Lil Hunter. I really like you a lot. Yeah, she's a fan favorite, for sure. <laughs> you're so small. She, she has a cult following, this one. Oh, you're so small. <laughs> guys, make sure to go in the description and Give a donation for Lil Hunter, okay? Thank you. How old is Lil Hunter? So I don't know how old she is or how what her life expectancy is. I know for like these chickens, it's gonna be around eight years old. Mm -hmm. But for the chickens that I'm about to show you, it's about one to three years old. Yeah. So Excuse me. with all the hens, yeah. do any of them lay eggs? Yeah, yeah. For the most part, they all do because it's just a natural part of their yeah. like cycle. But they're going to be like unfertilized eggs, and yeah. we'll just collect them in the morning and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think our chickens even get like birth control. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How does that work? I'm not really sure. We, Josh would be able to speak to it a little bit better than me. Yeah. <gasps> a oh. chipmunk? Oh, oh, a little ground squirrel. Yeah. Ground squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they definitely uh, coexist yeah, yeah, yeah. here. It was a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, they probably like the food. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> at, at the New York shelter, um, deer oftentimes live with our cattle. Oh, that's and cool. And they'll like give birth to their babies in the cow pasture. That's and then like so leave cool. their babies there while they go get food in the forest. Yeah. Bye chickens, it was nice to meet you. Goodbye friends. So where are we going now? So we're gonna go see some of our turkeys. Oh. <laughs> yup. And some of our other chickens. So the chickens that we just met mm -hmm. were largely rescued from the egg industry. Okay. Now these chickens were rescued from the meat industry. 
Okay. Um, so you'll notice their breed looks entirely different. Their build is much bigger. Yeah. Um, so chickens in the egg industry have been selectively bred to produce you know, as many eggs as possible mm -hmm. per year. These chickens have been selectively bred to grow as quickly and as large as they possibly can. So yeah. you'll see their, their build is really different. Yeah, they're, they're a bit more plump. Yeah, yeah, there's some plump ladies. So that's why they typically have a shorter life expectancy. Now, what's so funny to me is that, so in that bigger aviary that we were just in, mm -hmm. the flock leaders are two Polish crested roosters. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in here. We have Stephen and King. Uh. So I don't know what it is about that breed. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen, and Stephen, Stephen and King. Stephen and King. Yeah, exactly. Named after nice. Stephen King. I grew up in Maine. Oh, did you? Oh, did. nice. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so over here we have Thelma, who's running, <laughs> um, and then Serena right there. Hello. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so these two turkeys, they are uh, both heritage breed birds, so they more closely resemble wild turkeys mm -hmm. with the color of other feathers, even though they're much bigger than wild turkeys. Yeah. Now, most turkeys who are raised for food don't look anything like these girls. Most turkeys who are raised for food have been selectively bred to be completely white, okay. for the same reasons that the pigs have been selectively bred to be pink, uh, because the colorful feathers the leave color dar dark pigments on the skin, right? Yeah, yeah but these girls are amazing. So they're, um, they're normally kind of snuggly, but they're eating right now, so so they're, they're going to be a little preoccupied. Yeah, they're having a little salad. Yeah, they're having a little salad time. And how but old are these guys? Her uh, old best friend who passed away like last year and Serena, they were rescued in like 2018. So they're just a few years old. Thelma came after, so I think she's a little bit younger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're amazing. So you'll notice on Serena, she, she's been de-beaked mm -hmm. and de-toed. So, so that's really common for turkeys on farms uh, because of the overcrowding in yeah. these farms. They'll get frustrated. Yeah, they'll get frustrated with each other. They'll take it out on each other. And that's a concern for the farmer because they're damaging each other's flesh, right? So rather than giving yeah. the birds more space, they will opt to cut off the tips of the beaks and the tips of the toes when they're just babies without any sort of pain relief. That's so sad. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, but even despite everything she's been through, she's an incredibly loving individual. She's she's very affectionate. And something that I love that yeah. I didn't know until I started spending time here, a lot of species like music and enjoy music. It's not just humans, of course. But I never knew how much turkeys love music. Um, they really, really love music. Um, so I play guitar and I sing. And during the pandemic for my job, part of what I did is I made children's songs and uh -huh. we recorded them and put them on YouTube. And um, turkeys love music. They'll like come up and they'll they'll crowd <laughs> around me when I'm playing. That's so cool. Like, it's like, like they're cows in... with jazz. Have oh. you seen that? No, I haven't. There's. <laughs> But the turkeys, they'll like try to play my guitar with me. Sometimes they'll sing along. Never on like in the right key. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta work on That's that. That's okay. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you guys enjoy your salad. Enjoy your great. salad, it was friends. Great meeting you guys. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go see our sheep next. <gasps> sheep. How many different species of animals do you guys have here? Uh, the New York shelter, because it's so much bigger, mm -hmm. um, they have some more species than we do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll give you my list here. So we have goats, pigs, cattle, donkeys, horses, chickens, turkeys, sheep, and one llama. And you said the llama deters the coyotes? Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're obviously in a desert environment here. Yeah. There are lots of coyotes all around and coyotes were showing up trying to, you know, make meals of our residents and we obviously want to protect the ones that we love. So we found on Craigslist there was a llama being listed for free. Mm. Of course, everyone was concerned about him because animals are listed for free on Craigslist. That's very bad omen yeah. for them. You know, he might have been, even been used for food. Um, so he needed rescue. The llama? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that people eat llamas. I mean, he, he could have been. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's just a, it's a risk, right? Yeah. So he needed rescue, and we, you know, needed someone to help watch over our, um, our flock of sheep and goats. <laughs> so he is, like, sort of the bouncer here. He patrols up oh, there. Oh, I see him now. Yeah. His <laughs> name so is Yoda. Tall. Yoda? Yeah, we'll get a better view of him in here, too. Hello. Hello, friends. <laughs> <laughs> you have a jacket Hi, on. Hi, friends. Sheep are pretty, they like attention and stuff. Yeah, right? yes. Sometimes, yeah. It kind of depends how they were raised. Like, a lot of people come here for tours and they're like, wow, your sheep are so outgoing. Sheep have always been so shy around me. So I think it kind of depends on their environment. Here, they are very outgoing. This is Nina. Hi, Nina. 
she's a great ambassador here. Who's the one with the jacket? Oh, that's Regina. So Hi, she, Regina. yeah. So she, um, it's to protect a sore on her chest. Mm -hmm. um, so she has uh, three legs. She had a leg amputated when she was a baby. She suffered a very bad leg fracture. Yeah. So yeah, but she's living her best life out here. And then who else do we have? Regina, you're very pretty. Isn't she beautiful? So I love soft. her. You're so soft. Yeah, you are so soft. How many <laughs> sheep do you guys have here? Um, Bianca, how, how many sheep do we have? We have 33 right now. 33 sheep. 33 Thank you, sheep. Bianca. Bianca is one of our incredible caregivers. She does such an amazing job making sure that everybody is healthy and taken care of and everyone has individualized care. What are you doing right now? Um, right now, I'm giving some cutaneous fluids to Lucky. He's not doing super well. He's running a fever. Mm. Um, and he is an old man. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to keep him comfortable. We're doing this, including a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll, we're hoping to help perk them up and offering lots of treats. Ooh, some fresh fruit, Lucky? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, that's cool, Lucky. It's nice to meet you. I'll get out of your hair. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Hi. Hi. Some of them are more shy. For the most part, it depends on where they came from before. Yeah. But let's see who's around. Oh, Alice, do you want some pets today? Alice, you are. So, I mean, obviously from experience, from being around these yeah. animals all the time, but how do you tell the difference between all of these sheep and you know all the names? Like, That's what are a great the, question. What are the key characteristics of sheep? The longer you spend around them, the easier it is to pick them out, of course. So Shirley here, um, she One had skin stuff. cancer on her ears, so they took off parts of her ears to protect her. So she has shorter ears. Uh -huh. Some of them have woolier faces. Yeah. Some of them have, you know, markings, obviously. Does this guy have a tail? He does. Yeah. So sheep are, they naturally have tails, but they're usually docked in the industry. Hi. Hi, Alice. <laughs> so the sheep that came to us when they were just newborn babies, they still have their tails, but sheep who came to us a little bit later, they might have had their tails docked. So Ellis is awesome. He, he he reminds me of my cats in that he loves attention and affection. Ellis, and then <laughs> first, you are so fluffy. Like seemingly out of nowhere, you have offended him deeply, and he'll give you a little headbutt. Uh. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like he can be hard to read a little bit. So just as a heads up. So I have a question for you. Yeah. With sheep in particular. Yeah. Because sheep need to be shorn, right? Good question. Yeah. So so wild sheep don't need to be shorn. They will shed their wool. Okay. But domesticated sheep they need to be shorn. Okay. So um, some of our sheep here will shed their wool. Right, Bianca, is that correct? Yeah. yeah like, lucky. like Lucky. And like Felicity and mm. yeah, a few of them. But some of them need to be shorn or most of them here need to be shorn. And yeah. We shoot them here twice a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just about to ask how yeah. frequently. Is that kind of a traumatic? Good question. So in the, sheep. I mean, it's not their favorite day. Yeah. Um, but like in the wool industry, when they're, oh, you have a friend, this is Squid. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Squid. <laughs> How are you? He's named after like the Rocket Power character. I was just about to say. Yeah. Rocket Power. His, his, his old best friend was Otto. Oh. Yeah. In the wool industry, shears are typically paid per pound, so mm -hmm. they're incentivized to go very quickly, yeah. which is, you know, dangerous for the animals. They will oftentimes suffer amputations mm -hmm. um, from being shorn so quickly, and it's really dangerous. For the, it's also dangerous for the workers as well. Yeah. Um, but here at the sanctuary, we pay them per hour, mm -hmm. so um, we want them to take as long as they need to to make sure it's like yeah. the least traumatic experience possible. Um, so what happened? To yeah, so squid's life. just like Regina, mm -hmm. um, he was born um, to like a Future Farmers of America program, and he suffered a bad broken leg also. The folks who were caring for them, they did splint the leg and they tried to heal it. It was actually this leg that broke. Oh. But meanwhile, he was putting all this pressure on this leg, so wow. it ended up bowing out. But he also has a cart that he uses. So he has these, you know, these Hot Wheels that he takes around. And <laughs> yeah, oh hi, buddy. He's living up to the rocket power now. He is. He is living up to the. That's a good That's point. Really I didn't think about that. When you shear the sheep, yeah. what do you guys do, do with, with the, the wool? Do with the wool. We compost it. The components of wool is, is actually really, really mm -hmm. beneficial for the soil. And we're passionate about, mm -hmm. you know, improving the environment yeah. as well as taking care of animals. So um, it's very good for our soil. Also, when we're composting it, birds will find it and make nests yeah. out of it. So a lot of the nests that we see around here are very cozy looking. <laughs> That's really fun. Yeah, it's very cute. Hi guys. What are the species of sheep that you have? Cause oh, man. See these guys, yeah. and then the guys with the brown faces, and then. I'm not the best with naming all the different species of sheep, but I can tell you these ones over here with the black faces, they're dorpers. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
<laughs> the, the, the all brown ones. Like Felicity there, she's like Barbados. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of these, I need to study up on the species again. Yeah, but that's Yoda. He's just hi, checking Yoda. us out. <laughs> Can we say hi to Yoda or should Yoda, we not say hi to Yoda? Well, uh, spit if we get too close. Okay. Um, he's, yeah, Fair so enough. he's very protective. He, 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 he looks, has a close bond with a few of our staff here. Uh, um, I am not one of those people. But. He looks kind of pissed, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. He looks like, hey. Better... Yeah, he's uh, just concerned about everyone's safety here, so, so he's just keeping a lookout. Thank but you he for loves doing bananas. Such a good job. He loves bananas. He loves bananas. If we can locate a banana, we can feed him. Um, he's very cute with a banana. That's cool. Yeah, that's about his favorite so thing. So he won't spit at us if we give him a banana? No, he will not. He will not. Yeah, that's he'll. Cool. Well, that concludes the tour. Chloe, thank you so much for having oh, us. Oh, it's this been a joy. So cool. No, thank you so much for making the time to come out and thank you so much for sharing your message. Yeah, no, it was so cool seeing all the animals and just like seeing the awesome work that you guys do here and meeting some of the big boys. Super, super fun. So if you're in Southern California, we're in Acton. Is that we're in we Acton, are? yep. Cool, you can come to Farm Sanctuary. Where can, yeah. if people want to do a tour, like we just yeah. did, how So you can go online and you can check out our two locations, the one here in Southern California, and then we have like our huge location up in upstate New York. Both are spectacular, both are a great time. So if you're interested, it's a great event for the whole family. We have public and private tours if you want to make something extra special, you know, just for you and a loved one. Um, yeah, we'd be happy yeah. to set that up. I think we're definitely going to come back for, oh, a, for a part two girlfriend. video with my girlfriend. Awesome. I think she would love that. Good. But yeah, if you guys want to go in the description down below, leave links so you can donate and help out Farm Sanctuary and take care of their animals. And also, I'll leave the Instagram down there as well. So Thank you. Can, you. you can check yeah. in on the animals every day and, and see all of them. Like you. Like Boris. Hi, Boris. Mr. Boris. Hi. Thanks, Boris. Thanks for the tour. You did a real great job. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, um, my pleasure. Yeah. Here's a fun little animal montage to leave you with. 